Hello, my name is Ian Fennell. I'm a solution architect with Matillion. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up and use the API query component to load REST API data into Redshift. Let's get started. Matillion's API query component enables you to bring data into Redshift from XML or JSON-based REST APIs. It's quite a generic component and it requires you to provide some logic which describes the API. And you can do this under the project menu under Manage API Profiles. Before starting to build anything in Matillion, you'll need to have an understanding of the API. Things like how to call it, what authentication is needed, and how the output is structured. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use a simple public service which Amazon publish, and which just lists their IP address ranges. So I've gone to their API documentation page, and I'm going to use some things off here. First of all, the URL. I'm just going to copy the link location. And this is an HTTP GET. Um, and I'm also going to look at the structure of the output. So they've documented that here. Uh, and the things to notice are, first of all, it's a JSON document. There's a nested array in here called prefixes. They've shown one record, but I want to get all of the records out of here. And I want them to go into a table with three columns. And those columns are going to be called IP, prefix, region, and service. Going back to Matillion's Manage API Profiles window now, I've expanded this out to full screen to make it a bit easier to read. And I'm going to add a new API profile in here, which I'm going to call Security, and go in and edit that, and add a new API table called IP Ranges. Now I'm going to paste in the logic which I mentioned before and which describes the API. It's a piece of XML and the syntax of this is described fully in a series of technical documents which we've linked below the video itself. But you can see in here the URL and that's the thing I copied a few seconds ago. It's expecting JSON. It's an HTTP GET. The nested array which we want to repeat over and which defines the records is under the prefixes path and I'm outputting these three columns into every record. So having defined this, I'll press OK. And I'll go back in and press the test button and press that table. And uh, if this works OK, it'll go away and it'll query the API and it'll bring back a sample of the data. You'll need to make sure that your Matillion instance has the necessary network access to call the API. But once you've got here this far and you've got some sample data on the screen, then you're in great shape to continue. The API query is an orchestration component, so you'll need an orchestration job for it. And I'll create a new one here and switch into that to edit it. Uh, to find the load component, you'll need to search under the load unload, or because there's so many components, what I normally do is just search on the API, drag one of those into place and connect it up like this. And now you're ready to start to configure the properties. We can configure the component to set its properties, starting with the profile, and that's going to be security, the one that we just set up. The data source will be IP ranges. That was the only API table in there. The data selection, you can choose the columns. I'm just going to choose all three of them. And uh, going further down, the target table name, now I'm going to use a staging table for this purpose called stage API data. And it does need an S3 bucket. So I'm going to choose uh, the transient one that I that we have for this purpose uh, for temporary staging. The way this works is that um, at runtime, it'll query the API using the information that we set up. You'll get hold of the da data and temporarily stage it into that S3 bucket and do the bulk upload then into Redshift and it'll create or recreate this stage API data. So that's why it's a staging table. So at this point, you should uh, get a green tick in the task console. You should get a row of green OKs in the properties window and the green border itself on the component. And those things mean that it's ready to run. 
I could schedule this to run using the Matillion scheduler. Uh, I could get it to run using Matillion's SQS link. What I'm actually going to do is just run this interactively like this with a right click. The runtime will vary depending on how fast the API itself runs, how much paging it has to do, etc. But you should be able to, once it's finished, go to the console window here and check the row count uh, down the bottom there. In the ELT world, what we've done so far is the E and L, the extract and load into Redshift. Now we're ready to integrate that data with other data from different sources, maybe do some transformations or aggregations, etc. And that part needs a data transformation job. So I'm going to add a new one here, call it XForms and switch into that job. And to get hold of the data that we just loaded, I'll use a table input component to start with and I'll choose the table name that just got created and that was STG API data and I'll choose all of the columns from there as well. So just to make sure that we're looking at the right table I'll go to the row counts check that that's the same yeah that's fine and uh, we'll grab hold of a data sample as well and you can see that the data has been loaded into those three columns. So what I would do next is build out the remainder of this transformation job with further transformation components downstream and the idea is that when this job runs again tomorrow this stage table will get recreated by the API query but that's fine because by that time I will have already moved the data on into its permanent home inside Redshift. Hope you found that a useful resource for helping you to set up the API query component for loading your data into Redshift. For more information, visit us at matillion.com, where you can always launch a 14-day free trial from the AWS Marketplace.